some of the background. He was born in 1936, ordained as a priest for the Jesuit community, as you had pointed out, Father, uh, in 1969, and that in and of itself is a surprise. Father Malone, if you could speak to the fact that a Jesuit has now been elevated to, to the pontificate. Well, it's an extraordinary thing. Uh, he is the first Jesuit in the history of the Roman Catholic Church uh, to be elected Pope. Um, and without getting into the history of the Jesuits uh, formed in the uh, 16th century, um, it, 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 it's been a, we've had a stormy relationship uh, with the Church uh, in some centuries. And uh, it's it's really an ex it's an extraordinary thing. And insofar as there has been a tension between some aspects of the Vatican and, and the Jesuits, and I think having a Jesuit as pope, and in view of the fact that the Jesuits have been so uh, worldwide in in their uh, activity and their missionary activity and their teaching. Uh, in the church so that I think it would be interpreted as a sign of rather than making a selection for someone who's closer to the open stage or some much more conservative movement. Uh, now joining us uh, to discuss the significance of the choice. Eminentissimum Acreverendissimum Dominum Dominum Georgium Marium Sancte Romani Ecclesi Cardinalem Bergoglio Qui Sibi Nomen Imposuit Franciscum reaction in Argentina to the election of one of their own as Pope has sparked a divergence of opinion. While mainly positive, among some it's revived a polemic about the role of the Roman Catholic Church during the country's so-called dirty war. But the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo are more critical of the former Cardinal. They're campaigning for justice for their children who disappeared during the military dictatorship in the 70s and early 80s.
The church in Argentina was giving communion to the assassins, and the assassins should repent. Ours didn't repent, not even during their trials. He was nominated bishop at the time, and as a bishop, he could have done more. Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush, and George Herbert Walker, his maternal great-grandfather for whom his daddy is named, were Nazi traitors to the country who should have been tried for treason. Union Banking Corporation. Uh, in actuality, it was anything but a bank. It was essentially a Nazi money laundering operation that had a lot of tentacles into a lot of different other businesses. Incredibly, after being warned by the FBI and the Justice Department and the Treasury Department to cease and desist in their Nazi dealings, they had continued them until 1951. There had been 28 additional seizures of Nazi assets and Nazi business fronts between late 1942 and 1951, and that they had moved Nazi assets into Switzerland, Brazil, Argentina, 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 Argentina. A German U-boat pulls into a foreign port, not in Japan or Spain. In the South American nation of Argentina. Argentina's Juan Perón is an open admirer of Hitler's regime. And the country is already home to many powerful Nazis. In the coming years, many more will arrive, including the wanted war criminals Adolf Eichmann, the architect of the death camps, and Joseph Mengele, ducked Auschwitz's doctor of death. Argentina tenía el dudoso privilegio de albergar el partido nazi más importante del mundo fuera de Alemania. En Argentina, todas las condiciones eran correctas para aceptar a los nazis. Pero muy hábilmente consideraba que era un deshonor llevar a juicio a un ejército derrotado. En el caso de Mengele, el laboratorio Fabro Farm lo incorporó como parte de su plantel. A que lo encontró un equipo de la televisión de Estados Unidos. En el caso de Eichmann, los israelíes no iban a actuar por derecha y decidieron el secuestro directamente. ¿Qué mejor que un país hospitalario? Sixty years, this is how long it took Nazi hunters to track down Ivo Roinitsa, a Croatian officer, another who said he was just following orders as he oversaw the cleansing of Jews and Serbs in Croatia. Despite his denial, these documents show exactly what the 91-year-old man ordered done back in 1941 in Dubrovnik, Croatia, as a senior officer in the Ostashi, a fascist organization subordinated to the Nazis. Se traire a todos los judíos y serbios libre movimiento por las calles. This officer was on a mission of the SS, didn't only restrict the people's movement. Mentirle a la gente. Serbia y Judía de que los va a ayudar a trasladarse a Italia. Entonces eh, con ese cuento los metía en un barco sin eh, saber qué pasó con él. A wave of Nazi criminals washed South America after the war. The fugitive killers arrived with the shelter of dictator Juan Perón to Argentina to the Bariloche village. Others like Ornitza preferred Buenos Aires. The Croatian criminal may be feared of revenge but didn't really went out of its way to hide. He built a classic European house just 300 meters away from the president's house. <laughs> Ronita is wrong, the score is unsettled. After numerous setbacks, the hunters in the Byzantine Center, who have watched him all these years, believe Serbia will submit under pressure and demand his extradition. Now, the man in charge of cleansing Dubrovnik will finally face charges and will find out that the stain in his past cannot be erased. <laughs>
some of the background. He was born in 1936, ordained as a priest for the Jesuit community, as you had pointed out, Father, uh, in 1969, and that in of itself is a surprise. Father Malone, if you could speak to the fact that a Jesuit has now been elevated to the pontificate. Well, it's an extraordinary thing. Uh, he is the first Jesuit in the history of the Roman Catholic Church uh, to be elected Pope. Um, and without getting into the history of the Jesuits uh, formed in the uh, 16th century, um, it, 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 it's been a, we've had a stormy relationship uh, with the Church uh, in some centuries. And uh, it's it's really an ex it's an extraordinary thing. And insofar as there has been a tension between some aspects of the Vatican and, and the Jesuits, and I think having a Jesuit as pope, and in view of the fact that the Jesuits have been so uh, worldwide in in their uh, activity, in their missionary activity, in their teaching. Uh, in the church so that I think it would be interpreted as a sign of rather than making a selection for someone who's closer to the Opus Dei or some much more conservative movement. Uh, now joining us to discuss the significance of the choice of this Pope is Matthew Fox. Matthew's written 30 books on spirituality and culture including The Pope's War and he was once a Catholic priest and he is now an Episcopal priest and educator. Thanks very much for joining us Matthew. Thank you both. It, it's sentimentalized by the media, and there's very little critical thinking, and, and that's one reason I'm glad to be with you, and we can talk about the deeper meanings. Of course, the financial uh, situation in the Vatican is uh, quite scandalous at this time. It needs cleaning up almost as much as the, the issues of pedophilia and cover-up of pedophilia, and almost as much as the issue of the Inquisition, because all those three things, and I write about this in, in my book on the Pope's War, uh, the Inquisition has been brought back in the last 42 years, uh, with the last two popes. Uh, the Inquisition has been brought back. Uh, the Inquisition has been brought back. Uh, the
Thank <laughs> you.